Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. My name is Joe. I'm joined by Adam McCola. How are you? Just in the middle of a breakdown. What's up with you? I live in my ears. Yeah. Trying to be funny again. In a nice way. Yeah. We're here anyway for the Manchester United versus AC Milan preview. It's the second leg. It's a beefy tie as well now. We've allowed this to enter the territory of this could go wrong, haven't we? How worried are you about this fixture, first of all? For the sake of this being a good preview, I am very worried, John. No, but no, don't do it for the sake of this being a good preview. <laughs> because I, for me, I am a bit worried. So we can balance each other out regardless of, of whether you're I'm not worried. Or not. Right. And I don't know whether that's because I don't rate AC Milan or I don't rate the Europa League. Right. And I'm not really bothered about it. Okay. You kind of... My reaction... If you compare reactions just from the watch lands, mm. that Everton goal going in, for example, oh, God. and the AC Milan goal going in, yeah. on, couldn't have cared less. But I suppose the difference with those two goals is we lost two points from that Everton goal going in. With this game, we do have the second leg there. No, but that goal has shifted the momentum into AC Milan's favour, hasn't it? Um, a little bit. More They've got so, an away yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah. They've levelled up the tie. A clean sheet will do it. You know, a clean sheet does it. And we have to go there and try and score more than once. Look, I think that's possible. Um, but we've given them a, a little bit of a chance. Um, and I think they will come into this feeling like they are the favourites. Do you think? Um, they will feel that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think we will feel that as well. Well, you look at the last five results there, obviously three draws. One of those, the one against AC Milan, which obviously is a draw. I know it's not not a draw, but you did, we didn't drop points. We didn't really drop anything there. And other than a nil-nil, you know, United still basically need the same thing as Milan to go through. A 1-0 win wins it for United. It's not as though we're two, three goals down by any means, is it? So um, I, I don't think it's, it's too difficult uh, of a game for United. Do you think we're the better team? Do you think United, more importantly, will come out differently than they did at Old Trafford? Because the thing that surprised me most is, although maybe looking back it shouldn't have surprised me, we just played City on the Sunday. We're brilliant against City, one of our best performances in weeks, stopping their 21-game win, winning run. And then four days later, we were sluggish, we were second, second to every ball. Like AC Milan just had a bit more fire, a bit more energy to them. We almost got caught out against mm. AC Milan in those first 20 minutes. Do you expect us to now come into this game and, and really sort of hit them from the off? Because if we see what we saw last week, it's not going to be good, is it? If we see what we saw last week, we'll probably go out. Now, I do think this game probably will help us a little bit in that AC Milan will, will come to mm. play, won't they? They'll, they'll, they'll be the home team. They'll be looking to, to win the tie on the night and mm. seal it up. And I think they will commit a few more men forward. I also thought this during the game at Old Trafford, like if Zlatan played, would they have been easier for us to manage? Mm. Because when you've got that big nine, you know who they're going to look for. You know everything, where it's going to go through. When we played them without Zlatan, like they had so many runners off the ball and everything, will their style of play change if Zlatan comes into the team? Because I do think that helps us. Because mm. then the... The, the pace of their attacking line is, is slowed down a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Once you take the, the pace and out also of the middle. they become a bit more predictable as well, maybe. We'll talk fully about Zlatan in a little bit. But before that, let's move on to our attacking line because we're still... We may have Paul Pogba back. We may have Van der Beek back. But we're still without Cavani, who's withdrawn from the squad. We are without uh, Anthony Martial as well. Basically, our only two recognised number nine. The Cavani one's a worry as well because we all thought, all right, Martial hadn't made it. Yeah. But Cavani had... Yeah. And then one minute before we were about to record this, yeah. Cavani's had a bad reaction to training. Yeah. Now, is that a further setback? Or is that, He's just not all right, let's yet. not yeah. send you on a plane. We'll get you ready for the weekend. I hope it's the latter. But if it's the first one, mm. then that's a little bit worrying because if he's had a setback or a reaction to returning to training, then that would be a problem, wouldn't that's it? That's another injury. So, so important to have Pogba and Donny van der Beek back. Mm, yeah. Um, especially when you look at the creativity and the lack of it. Um, but how how annoying must that be for Donny van der Beek? Yeah. He's, he's out injured when Pogba's out injured. <laughs> and he comes back the same game. <laughs> same like, day. Oh, I'm, I'm fit. Oh, what do you mean same he's fit as well? <laughs> same what training you session. Pogba, right? Can you say fucking... He just, Pogba just comes back like that as well. Like, no same warning, training session. No nothing. And then this morning, there's like pictures of Pogba training and Van der Beek training. Like, for fuck's sake, <laughs> lads. Like, I'm trying to make a name for myself here, Paul. Can you just stay out I've been relying on this guy getting injured yeah. and leaving the club. And now all I hear is, 
Oh, Pogba signed a new, a new deal. <laughs> and he's back in training. Unbelievable. Uh, just to finish on Cavani quickly. You want to um, finish on Cavani? Well, I mean, you know, if he was available, I, I might be able to, but he, he, he withdraws <laughs> from everything. And pulling out is no good in this instance. Um, a final point on Cavani. There was the quote from Ollie the other night that is somewhat concerning about how Martial wasn't fit and Cavani didn't play or whatever it was. It was some, it, some way of seemingly suggesting we thought Cavani was fit but he's told us he isn't. So that worries me a little bit because that was on Sunday that Ollie was basically hinting that Cavani might be fit here and he's not playing anyway. Because they didn't want... Was Sunday the City game you were talking about? No, was Sunday the was the West Ham game. Because the City game, Martial weren't supposed to play in that game. Mm. He got told like an hour before kickoff, if I remember correctly, because Cavani was supposed to play. Mm. Um, so it's a bit weird as well. It is very weird. and it does Remember when he said he though. only wants to play PSG? Remember he was like, I want to get revenge on PSG when he signed. That didn't work. What if he it? only came just to play against PSG? <laughs> I don't like the idea of that. Talking about Paul Pogba, <laughs> let's move on from, from uh, suggestions that Edison Cavani doesn't care about playing anymore. Although those suggestions have been made for the last couple of weeks about he wants to leave, he's not happy. Can someone yeah, tell me what it is he's always drinking? It's like a... It's that mate thing, is it? What is that? It's like a... I think it's a type of tea or a tea-like Ooh. substance that's very Can popular in South America. Yeah, day. should we get some? For PR piss take? Yes, we'll get some yes. for next week. Some mate, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, does mate have dad shops on it around here? I'm sure it does. You know that place where Steve goes thinking yeah. he's cool by paella? Yeah, I'm doesn't pretty even sure. Eat it. I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, <laughs> oh I'm my... Sure it's why mate's dad just cooked <laughs> for me? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he did. Some, <laughs> some mank fella. Called yeah. Dave cooked for you. Yeah, who's only been working there for about two weeks. <laughs> he's ruining the recipe. Doesn't even know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Pogba and Van der Beek then. Obviously, we've looked at it from Van der Beek's selfish perspective. Not that he has that perspective, but for United's perspective. Every player has that perspective. Of course, but we don't want to... I'm not speaking for Donny <laughs> yeah. Van der Beek. Um, from a United perspective, having Pogba back, for me changes everything in terms of my worries about the attackers, my worries about whether Van der, Ve Van der Beek's fit or, uh, sorry, Cavani's fit or Martial's fit or not. Because for me, Mason Greenwood with Bruno and Pogba behind him and Rashford mm. behind him will get enough chances to win us the game. I hear or what you're saying. Between them, we'll, we'll create and, and uh, facilitate What you're saying is you're more confident with Greenwood and a better service then yes. a better strike force and yeah. a lack of service yeah. is what you say. Yeah, and, and that's not to knock Mason Greenwood, but obviously Cavani's got 350 career goals. Like, Of course, of course. Of, yeah. No, I agree with that. I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. Um, and the Pogba thing has been interesting, hasn't it? Because he's good. F the good form he's enjoyed over the last couple of months has then been set back by injury. Yeah. And what's incredible as well, by the way, have you seen his chance creation in the Premier League over the last five years? He's like top. But he's missed huge chunks of campaigns. Yeah. Every single season almost. Like, yeah. huge. Last year, he played what? Before lockdown? Five games or something. Like, yeah, something nothing he had yeah. played. Like, his numbers for someone that fucking misses chunks of seasons mm -hmm. is incredible. But getting him back, man, we, we missed him. I mm -hmm. think our best midfield two personally is Matic and Pogba. When Matic has had a rest, that is. Yeah. Um, and in this game, I think playing Matic and Pogba or McTominay and Pogba... Mm -hmm is the way you're going to win it because you need a little bit more creativity. We've seen it in a multiple, or sorry, in a number of games, let me speak English. We've seen it in a number of games where Fred and Fred, as, as, I always say Fred and McTominay as if they're one. Yeah. Do you know? It's, they're almost Siamese twins, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Like Fred's sorry. distribution of the ball isn't good enough. No. He's perfect to play against Manchester City to break everything up and win yep. the ball back, but the distribution isn't good enough. And just having Paul Popper in there, yeah, and when he just before he got injured, he was getting the ball in the right areas. Mm. He was playing in the right areas. He was one touching it at the right times. He was dwelling on the ball at other times when it was the right time. Like everything was right from him. Like yeah, we just got him. I hope he comes back in that form, man. Yeah, me too. Um, right, let's move on to predict 11s then. Talking about midfields and and who we like. We'll start with yours. Who are you predicting uh, United are going to play for this game? Because it is, at this to point, a, a pretty crucial times. team, isn't it? And, and obviously, yeah, the Cavani news is very recent uh, as of our recording of this. So we've had to sort of shift things and move things around. But let's start with your team. So I obviously went Dean Anderson in goal. Yep. Um, Wan Bissaka, Lindelof. I originally went Bay and Maguire. Mm -hmm. Then I was informed that Bay is injured. So that was the first change that came in my team. Um, Luke Shaw at left back. 
Uh, McTominay and Pogba mm-hmm. in the midfield. So you put Pogba straight back in then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only turn up for training for the first time yesterday? Yeah, he doesn't even have to train, mate. It's, it's <laughs> straight like, in. It's like me at my Sunday league team. Oh, right, you don't yeah. have to train, you just turn up, have the armband. You'll be all right, bruv. Nice. Yeah. Um, left wing, Rashford. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the middle, Bruno. Right wing, Ahmad. And Greenwood up top. Originally, I had Bruno, Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani at or Marshall, mm. and then it had to get changed. So that's the team I've come up with. Start Ahmad Diallo. I was going to say, Ahmad's the sort of talking point team. there, isn't he? Are you expecting that Ahmad will start there? Because obviously... Not expecting, hoping. You're hoping for that more than anything. You think? Well, let's go on to my team then, because it's a, it's a very similar team, really. But mine is with a slightly less hope, I'll be honest, in terms of mine's a bit more of an expected I used to be predicted. called the hope by my mates. Did you? Like the great hope. Oh. You know why? Because like... Basically, you know, at like clubs and that, mm. like, you know, if at the last minute your one of your mates gets chopped out, mm. I'd be the one that could talk him in. Really? Well, like, talk to the bouncers and get, get him back in. in. Nice. Sometimes that would result in me flipping Getting my head. Getting kicked out as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. But 70% uh, of the yeah. time it worked all the Lads, time. Lads, come on. He's had a bad week at work. Come on, bro. Lads, it's, just not, come it's on. not a problem. We'll, we'll make sure. Do you know what? If he does anything again, <laughs> kick us all out. <laughs> what, you know, if he, if he flips one more table, <laughs> kick us all out. Just let him back in. Are you pissed? Let him back in. <laughs> See <laughs> what happens. Uh, my team, anyway, Henderson, yeah, I think he's, it seems like this, he, I mean, he would be playing this game anyway. De Gea may, be, may well be back for the weekend, <laughs> but I think Henderson's our cup goalkeeper, regardless of, of, of De Gea's fitness. And then Wan-Bissaka and Love Maguire Shaw. I think it's, you know, I know we've seen Tellers recently, but um, Shaw's our first choice left back at this point. He's been pretty brilliant since uh, Christmas, especially. Uh, so I'd have him. I've gone Freddie McTominay because I'd, I'm not certain Ole will risk Pogba um, from the start after he's been out for what's about five weeks now. I think it was the 5th of, uh, 5th of what March. What if he goes? The uh, 5th of February, sorry. Sorry to cut you off no, while you're talking. Do you know what he's done a few times? Pogba on the left where Rashford is in that picture. Mm. He could also do that. Yeah, you know. that wouldn't surprise me. And then you go me. Rashford through the middle, Greenwood on the right, or James on the right, and Bruno in behind. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's three or four ways you can do it. It depends whether Pogba's fit, and I'm predicting that he won't be fit enough to start, maybe come on. Because the th- thing to think as well is, we know with Paul Pogba, he's had injuries, come back, and then got injured again quite quickly. So for me, starting him, unless it's really necessary, I wouldn't do. But I feel because like... we need him for the rest of the season now. I feel like his return has been, I think they've managed it mm. so that he'll only come back when he's ready. Yeah. Well, I agree with that, but I, I'm, I, I'm not certain he'll be back. I know he's, he's, he's travelled, but I'm not Even if he misses there. today. Yeah. Or, we're well, not today. Yeah, today. Misses the game against Milan today, if you're watching it, mm. on the match day. Um, then getting him back this week ahead of that Leicester game. Crucial. That's, Crucial. that's what I mean. So whether it's 30 minutes or he doesn't start or whatever... I don't think he will start. So I've gone Freddie McTominay. Uh, then I've gone James Rashford, uh, Fernandez in behind Mason Greenwood. I thought Mason Greenwood had probably his best game of the season so far against uh, West Ham Pretty on Sunday. Pretty unlucky a couple of times. He's really yeah. unlucky. Hit the post once. Hit the post twice, actually. Once was a good save by uh, uh, the goalkeeper and the other one was just, just straight into the post. Um, but he was really good. He linked up play really well. He drove to the line really well, pulled the ball back. He, he won the corner for the, the United scored from. What so, have you made of him being dropped to... The twenty threes for England and all that. I just I think it's a, a result of because it looks like he's not going to go to the Euros, which no. I think is a bizarre decision. Well, I think it's just a result that he's. What has he scored two goals this season? And you know, if if Gareth Southgate, who clearly, you know, I know that Foden was part of that as well, but there was some level of confrontation or animosity or something there wasn't. He was dropped from the squad for. We all know what he dropped from the squad for. So I think a mixture of that, a mixture of the fact that he's not had his best season, is this this year he hasn't been as good as last year in terms of his output. I, I, I think that's probably why he's been dropped down to the 23s. But for me, him playing an international tournament, I'm happy with that anyway. And I think he, he could still get a call up if things turn around the last few weeks of the season. But yeah, I expect him up front. Um, let's move on to, to Milan a little bit then. And the main man, the one man that we were all talking about before the fixture was announced, or Kessie. before we, we realised he was going to be injured, that is uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh. Not Kessie, for flip's sake. Zlatan Ibrahimovic um, has been out for, for, Milan for a, a little while now. This is him this season. 21 appearances, 16 goals, 2 assists. The key for me there is, obviously he's got loads of goals. We know he's got loads of goals. He always gets loads of goals. The fact that he's only made 21 appearances means he has been injured for a pretty decent chunk of this season. or unplayable. And left out at various times. Exactly, yeah. Um, because they've managed him quite well as well. 
Um, so he wasn't playing like the Coppa Italia games and yep. things like that. Um, incredible. Mm. I think he's he is incredible. When you look at the injury that he suffered at United, that was a big as injury. As a 35 you know. year old as well. As a 35 year old man that then went to LA mm. and all due respect to the MLS, played at a lower standard for a while, mm -hmm. killed it there to then come back to Serie A, which okay, it's not the physicality of the Premier League. No. It's not the pace. It's not the May quality. It's maybe either, not even honest. the speed of the MLS, yeah. Yeah. But 16 goals, yeah. two assists, got them back into Champions League football, Champions second League Second in the table as well. Second in the table. I don't think they'll win the league now, no. but they've been there or thereabouts for a lot of the season above Juventus. Which is surprising. Led by Ronaldo. As well, because, well, not just because it's led, led by Ronaldo, but Milan haven't been near that for a long time. It's mm. been Juve running away with it every season. So Milan and United are the same team, yeah. bruv. Yeah. Almost. Don't say that. Kind of the same. Except they're in a the worst league, let's be honest. And but they're in a worse shape. They've been... Yeah, they're... Battered. They've been less relevant for longer. For longer. Isn't it? Um, but uh, Zlatan, I mean, obviously this season's been great. His whole career has been pretty remarkable as we know as United fans I'm pretty sure we all did the research and look back at his stats and highlights and goals and stuff when he signed for United uh, but yeah his his career in general has been ridiculous I pinpoint his injury as the time Jose days were numbered yeah. at United that's when it slowly went unraveled yeah because I think he was Jose's example yeah like Look at this guy. Yeah. He'd suck my hand off right yeah. now. <laughs> He'd suck my hand off for three points. <laughs> like, you know, this guy would do anything for me. Yeah. And he's won it all. Yeah. Like, that showed you you should just stick by me. And I think in the dressing room, he would have been someone good to go to Pogba when maybe Pogba mm. and Jose's had an argument. Yo, Paul. Yeah. You know what he's like. Yeah. Do it on the pitch. Whereas you lose that guy that's in the dressing room trying to hold everyone together. Mm. That's a good friend of the, the managers, you lose a bit of the dress especially room. When you think, when it went. Especially when you think for the sort of two or three years preceding that, we'd slowly chipped away at all of the big characters in the dressing room as mm. well. Giggs and Scholes and Ferdinand and Vidic and Evra and Carrick. I think Carrick was maybe still there just about, but we were sort of slowly losing anyone that had any sort of respect and hierarchy that was in that dressing look room. Look what Jose did to Bastian Schweinsteiger, yeah. who wasn't particularly a United key figure but still yeah. a respected figure in the dressing room Rooney left yeah exactly like, was, we were struggling yeah, at that was, time and it was difficult without time. him it, it, it I mean lost a lot of its lust in the Jose era um, mm. you see there is, is mm. overall stats 483 goals probably will get 500 before he goes ridiculous stats um, let's move on to Milan generally then before we go finally Milan's last five results not great worse than United's only by uh, a 1-0 loss to what was the equivalent draw for United whose badge is that middle one if you're so sick then Hellas Verona you got good eyes I mean, it's Hellas Verona, he, and he, he says it on he, the screen. He read it. I read it. Yeah, I thought that was so dark that you couldn't read it. You obviously read it. I've so. got great eyes. I didn't think I had good eyes, but I think I might have good eyes. They lost um, against Napoli. Last yeah, exactly. They lost against Napoli the other day. They have been faltering a little bit in the last sort of 10, 15 games. They were right up there with But is that because that. they've gone, fuck the league, Europa League? Potentially. Um, obviously, they got the toughest draw in the Europa League, I would say, and that's not necessarily as a biased United fan. I think United are probably the best team in the league. But are we, uh, though? Europa because I, yes. the reason I say okay. this, like, on paper we are, but I, when I watched Spurs last week in this competition, okay, they didn't play a team that's as good as the team we've just played. Yep. But it looked like a team that, no, this is their only chance to do mm -hmm. anything this season. But that, You looked at yeah. United as a team that, We'll get Champions League football through the league. Like, mm. we don't care about this. That's how I felt watching it. Unless yeah. it was just a really lethargic performance. I think it was a really lethargic performance. I think it, doesn't, it wasn't helped by the fact that it was straight after the City game, which required so much energy and intensity energy. And, and concentration for 90 minutes. Also, let's not forget, uh, as much as you want to call Jose washed up or, never, you know, he is washed up. whatever, whatever you want to call him, whatever you want to say about him, he is a fantastic cup manager. And the fact that, He's not going for Champions Leagues with his clubs anymore. He's going for Europa Leagues. Is maybe a testament to where his career is. But in terms of getting a team amped up, hyped up, you know, ready to to, to win a cup competition, he's one of the best there's ever been. So Tottenham, I would put maybe second or third uh, favourites for it just because of Jose. And they do have some good players as well. But if you're AC Milan, the, the draw you didn't want was Man United, surely. Mm. Um, but it's, it's a massive game. Um, before we go then, 
give us your thoughts on what we will see because we talked a bit about the start that United had last time. We talked a little bit about the how much United value this competition, maybe not that much. What are you actually expecting this game to be like? AC to dominate possession, mm -hmm. United to dominate the scoreline and kill them on the counter. Yeah. I think this will be a different game and I think we will beat them. But if we don't want it as near as much as them, we will get battered mm. because they are a good team. And if if we have an off day, mm. we know we can get battered. Yeah. And I think we sort of, I know we didn't get battered, but we kind of proved that last week, didn't we? But, but I think we'll beat them. Yeah. I think, what, what, what give us your score prediction. What are you thinking? I think it will be a tight game, but it will end like 3-1 United because oh, yeah. we'll score, they'll score, and then we'll get a goal. They'll be trying to score and we'll hit them on a the counter attack. Yeah. Bruno penalty as well at some point. For me, um, I, I know you think they're going to have a lot of possession because they're at home. I've got a feeling, I was, I was watching, I think it was either Sky or BT a couple of days ago, and a lot of articles in Italy and in Milan talking, actually may have been uh, Andy Mitten's Twitter, I can't remember where it was, some, somewhere, saying about the articles that were being written by the uh, Milan press <coughs> and by the Italian press about the importance of a clean sheet. And I wouldn't be surprised if they just sit right on the edge of the 18-yard box, just try to defend the whole game, because United struggle against that. We always struggle against that. I reckon they, they might try and hold out for a clean sheet. If we do get that goal, that's when I think it may turn into what you've described there, where it's goal, 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 because... At that point, you know, everyone has to score. So I'm going to I'm gonna go a, a cagey 1-0 United. We've not scored much recently. Defensively, we've been better. I think we will take it a bit more seriously uh, than we did in the last week, uh, than we did last week. Um, I'm going to go 1-0 United, but I think it's been really difficult. Let us know at home. Do you want a stat? Yeah, go on then. Milan mm -hmm. have only kept one clean sheet in their last nine home games in Europe. Well, I mean, good. Is that bad or good for us? It's good for us. Because I, I think those are, they're the sort of stats where it's not like, well, they're due, I don't think you're ever due a clean sheet. <laughs> you know, if you're shit at defending, you just keep conceding. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You, you don't get clean sheets for free. We've been so shit for the last six years. Surely this is Surely the one. Surely this is the one. Yeah, I, I'm expecting a United win, but I think it will be really tight because we've not really beaten anyone convincingly for a few weeks now. Let us know apart at home. Apart from City. Your predictions, yeah, apart from that game. By the way, let us know, um, can you give a, the shout out to the people in the... Um, Cam? In the backwards. Cam gave yeah. us a nice little reel here. Is this what you mean? Yeah. Looks very nice. There's a stat in that uh, the whole time. You idiot. So this is like the place where... Yeah. You get some stats. You get some info. You get some team news in there. Uh, very good. And little Cam worked real, really hard ticker. on that. Yeah. Worked really hard on and it. Make sure you like the video even as well. made it Europa League colours. Yeah. It's fantastic. So Give like us, the video for yeah, Cam. Like the video. Give us your score predictions as well in the comments below. Let us know whether you think United are going to be more like they were against City or more like they were against Milan last week, which was a little bit drab and a little bit cagey. Again, I'm predicting a tense, tough game that United will so just tough. about battle through. Thank you very much Sorry for joining for me, Adam. You've gone 3-1 you've gone finally, 3-1? 7-0. 7-0 United. Uh, we're going to see a Roma type performance. I'm going. I'm sticking with one nil. Uh, let us know your predictions in the comments. By the way, uncensored mm. as well. We done an uncensored. Yeah, this check week. that out. Piss take. Yesterday. You know what? Yeah, people keep saying it's getting better and better. Peel piss take. Mm. It was a good episode this week. It was. A it was a very good episode. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. And again, check out Housen and Macola uncensored if you haven't already. Thank you very much once again, Adam, for joining us. Thank you for joining us at home. We'll be live tonight with the live watch along. I'll be there. Adam's going to be there. Jay's going to be there. Alex is going to be there. We've got everyone there for the watch on for Am Manchester United against AC Milan tonight. We'll see you in a bit.